when I started traveling more, a couple of years, two, three years back now, I quickly learned a lot about how you should and shouldn't pack camera gear. There's a lot of things you should do that really protects it, and a lot of things that you should definitely avoid, like checking your camera gear. I see a lot of people talk about that all the time, how they post photos of like damaged camera gear after it's been through airlines conveyor belt systems in their bags no matter if it's in a hard case or what it comes back and they just kind of expect the airline to pay for the thousands of dollars of camera equipment when ultimately it was their fault for putting it in there in the first place because you should never check camera gear at all ever it's just not a thing you should do camera gear is valuable and anything that is valuable you should not let out of your sight basically like it's the same rule that you apply in life you should apply to when you travel with it um, but more recently I see problems now with overhead storage space on a lot of the smaller planes even some of the larger planes now traveling city to city from Canada like to go to slightly smaller cities in the US, not even like tiny cities, like to go to Kentucky for Louisville, Kentucky last year, for example, I had to change still. Like, there's no direct flight to Louisville. So I started to see that overhead bins are always full, always. And I used to like to travel with a Peter McKinnon 25 liter bag, which I've got right here with me, filled with camera gear kind of what got me thinking about talking about this topic I'm just waiting for some people to turn up and they're gonna be a little bit late um, so yeah wanted to chat about this but I used to travel with the Peter McKinnon 25 liter bag as my personal item as in the item that you can tuck under your seat in front of you and then a roller carry bag that would have all my clothes and my shoes and my laundry laundry wash bag stuff in it and that kind of thing and that was how I roll I wanted to avoid a check bag because a check bag meant extra time in the airport in the middle of the pandemic after the pandemic it was really slow there were short staff airports everywhere and it would just take I think I waited like an hour and a half one time coming back from LA no, San Diego for check luggage and that was when I kind of made a decision. Nope, I'm only going to go carry on. So I did Peter McKinnon 25 liter as a personal item. It's a little bit technically too big, but it still looks like a small backpack, so you can probably get away with it. And by comparison to a lot of other people that you watch now when they're boarding the plane, it's smaller than everyone else's personal item. Um, the Peak Design 25 liter is also a really great um, personal item bag, as is the Wandred 25 liter. The one with the roller top makes those go under the back, uh, the front seats of airplanes a lot easier and you can justify it as a personal item. Um, now, depending on the plane, you might still have space to put it up top, but it's more about if you can fit it under the seat if you have to. Um, so, yeah, I would take the Peter McKinnon 25 liter as a personal item and then I'd have a, uh, I can't remember the name of my bag. It's like the maximum overhead bin size you're allowed to take in North America. Different to Europe though. If you fly in Europe, the maximum size for a carry-on roller bag is different, so be aware of that. There's actually two versions of the bag that I bought for Europe and then North America. Um, and for the longest time that worked out well, but then I started to need to bring more camera gear with me. And when I needed more camera gear than my 25 liter Peter McKinnon could fit, what I would do would be, I'd take out like my biggest lens, um, like a 7200, or I travel a lot with a 50 to 400 Tamron, and those are bigger, heavier lenses, and they take up a lot of space in the Peter McKinnon bag. And I'd put them in one of these. It's a, uh, it's a Y-Wrap from, um, 
CRD bag, cord bag. And they make the patches as well, the, the labels and or pouches and stuff that I've talked about before lots on the main channel. Um, or you could put it in like a lens pouch or whatever and then I'd wrap it in a pair of jeans, wrap it in a jacket. And it's pretty safe in my carry-on bag. But the problem is then what has happened and what you see happen to a lot of people now is when you go to get on the plane, you hear them come over the tannoy. Ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for choosing I Fly With Air Canada. Air Canada. Just to let you know that um, the flight today is full, as every flight is these days. There's never empty seats. You never get the middle seat free anymore. It's very rare. Um, we're looking for 20 volunteers to check their carry-on because there's likely not going to be enough space. And as a photographer or a videographer, you do not want to hear that when you know you have everything with you in your carry-on. Especially if I have lenses or whatever in my extra, or my between my two carry-on bags, my personal item and my roller bag. So, there's a few ways to avoid having to check that because what they'll happen what will happen is you'll line up and they will literally look at you in line you can watch them doing it they will as you get closer to, they will check out your bag and they'll say um no you can't bring that on you're gonna have to check it so if you have a lens in there now you run the risk of the lens getting damaged or you take the lens out and you have to carry it physically in your hand like literally in your hand um and you don't have any space for it, and it's a pain, and then you've got to put that in the front. Like, where do you put a lens? When you're, you're getting on a plane, you've got your personal item filled. You can't put a lens in the, the seat back pocket. You, it just doesn't work. You can't throw it up without anything above you. It's also happened with me with batteries. They, my other carry-on, not my personal item, was filled with batteries, um, like portable charger batteries, drone batteries, and they gave me the nope your bag's got to be checked there's not enough room literally on the tarmac like walking out to the plane when i didn't have one of those tunnels you could walk through going up the stairs to get into the plane they're like no sir you're gonna have to check your bag i'm like it's filled with batteries and they're buried at the bottom we don't care like you need to take the batteries out and give us your bag I'm like not really given an option so i'm literally on the tarmac between where i've exited the terminal to get on the plane taking the batteries out and having to hold them because my personal item is my backpack, it's filled with stuff, hence the reason it's overflowing into the main carry-on, and then I'm to hold these batteries and get on the plane, and it's just, it's not a great experience. So, the biggest, there's two main ways you can avoid now getting your stuff potentially checked. The number one is to get status with an airline. Pick an airline you want to use, if you don't have options, just throw money, or throw flip a coin and kind of hope for the best that that's the one you're going to like being with long term. But pick an airline, stick with them, get status. Status means you collect points every time you fly, you build up a loyalty program with an airline and it gets you perks. Now, there's other ways you can do this as well. You can kind of jump the process of having to build the points and build the miles and get status you can get a credit card that you might pay a premium for um, which is what I do but I already had status um, so it kind of goes hand in hand with it but what that does is it gets you lounge access when you're at the airport waiting but also it gets you the status and then when you have status excuse me you get to board early so with Air Canada when you have silver silver I think it's silver um, the most basic status, 25k, you get zone 2 boarding, which is basically uh, the way airlines board is families with kids, military, um, then business class, which is zone 1, and then zone 2, which is everyone that starts to have status. You can get zone one status as well, I think, if you've been there, if you're like super elite or whatever. Um, and then when you have status, you get to board the plane first, and odds are they're not really going to pre-picking you in the line to check your luggage. 
I literally have heard Air Canada say before, if you're zone four or onwards, you, I think it goes up to zone five, you will be checking your, your bags. So that's one way. The other way is to just take one bag. If you take one bag, I find you do not get, they look at you and like, ah, oh, got one bag, he's fine. How do you do all your camera gear in one bag? Now, obviously there's a risk involved here because if you did have to check it, then yes, you're screwed. But um, simple answer is you have to check a bag. And as I said earlier, when you used to check a bag, it'd be hours and hours you have to wait. But now you don't have to wait. And I've noticed this a few times now, and this is why this is how I fly now. You check a bag, you put all your clothes in your bag, all your toiletries in your bag, and if you do what I do, you bring the Peter McKinnon 35 liter bag, which fits a ton more, fits everything you could possibly need. You throw your tripod in your checked bag. If you bring a drone with you, you put the drone in the checked bag. Drones are generally a little bit harder wearing. Um, if they're in a case, you put them in the case, you take the batteries out, you carry the batteries with you, and do you send the checked bag on its way. In your Peter McKinnon 35 liter, you throw in an extra t-shirt, an extra pair of boxes, socks, small deodorant, toothbrush, basically the emergency stuff. If your check luggage did get delayed for a day and you needed time to go buy some more stuff or for it to arrive because it got sent to the wrong place, which happens and has happened to me many times, like three times, um, then you have everything you need in the one bag, in the front. When you get to wherever you're going, you take out the backup t-shirt and whatever and you just have a camera bag the other benefit with doing a check bag is you can pack a smaller bag in the check bag because check bags way more than you need anyway especially if it's only for like three days so you pack a smaller bag in there and then you can transfer your camera gear to a smaller bag and it seems counterproductive to be repacking but believe me this is the way i've been doing it now for like the past five trips and it is by far just the most efficient way to do it because you have to worry less about space because you have so much space. Your backpack doesn't weigh as much because you don't need to put a tripod in there. Yeah, that's the way I've been traveling. And if you're a photographer or videographer and you're able to check a bag, oh, that's the other benefit of status. You get a bag included because now you have to pay every single time. Like with Air Canada, I think it's $50 each way, each leg of the journey there and then back to check a bag. Or if you're silver status, the most basic one, which you can get with a credit card, it's included. So you get your zone two board in, you get your lounge access, and you get a checked bag. So everything kind of ties together. And that is how I have been traveling, and I would recommend you try doing it too, because it just makes life a lot easier. You don't have to worry about potentially checking your stuff and it being damaged. It's, everything is with you. I'm sure you could argue for the fact as well, if you had to with a gay agent, I mean, you don't want to argue, but politely say, hey, listen, this is everything I've got in here. There's no way for me to carry this. And yeah, it's a funny story actually. Um, there was one time we were coming back and it was, who was with me? I can't remember, Maddie um, was with us too. And he didn't want to have to, he had uh, his A7S III with him. And he didn't want to have to, he didn't have an extra bag. He didn't have space or something like that. I, I couldn't remember what the, the reason was. He had one bag with him, a backpack. And then he had his A7S3 and it didn't fit. And he didn't want to have to put it in his, his check bag. He didn't want to carry it. So the way he got around it was he had it in just a plastic carrier bag. And he was going through the airport with his A7S3 in a plastic carrier bag. We asked him, why are you doing that? And he's like, well, if something's in a plastic carrier bag, they're not going to ask you to, to check it and it doesn't count towards your personal item or your carry-on because it it looks like it's something that you bought at the airport. So that's a pretty genius hack that you can do as well if you need to, just throw in a carrier bag and breeze on through. But yeah, that's how I've been traveling and um, how I'd recommend you potentially try traveling as well. Just makes life a little bit easier.